Now that we've finished entering everything into feet and we set up our model, all we need to do is hit go. One thing I should mention is you should type in or select an output directory. In this case, I've just typed in output. This is under the data tab. So any analyses will be output into this folder that you specify here with a dot feet extension. Okay, so everything looks good and we can go ahead and hit go. Notice that progress is tracked by HTML files that pop up in your web browser. First thing you'll notice is we are now on a tab called log. This will keep track of everything that goes on. And as each step completes, you'll see new lines of text shown down here. Also notice we have four tabs, again, just like in feet. We have pre-stats, stats, post-stats, and registration. All right, now it says still running, so it's still crunching through some numbers, but after each step is completed, you can click on these tabs and you'll see some results. Now, we don't have anything yet, so it's going to say not run. So all we need to do is sit back and wait for the analysis to finish. Now that our analysis is done, we can see that everything has been spit out into this log file. And if there are any errors, you should be able to see them here. First, we're going to go into the pre-stats and see what happened. All this does is shows you the results of the motion correction from MC Flirt. Now, a good rule of thumb is any sudden motion that's more than, say, half of a voxel size is cause for concern, something you might want to investigate further. However, in this case, everything seems to be within reasonable bounds, nothing exceeded, just a few tenths of a millimeter. So that all looks good. Next is stats, which is just what we looked at a couple tutorials ago. It'll show you your design matrix and also your efficiency and the effect size needed to estimate each of these contrasts at a given Z threshold. Post stats will show you, rendered on these brain slices, what the different contrasts activation maps look like. So, as you, if you recall, before we said that the threshold we want is only show us voxels that have a z-score of 2.3 or higher. And that's the lower bound of this heat map here. So you can see this first one is left minus right, and that contrast produced activation in the right motor cortex, which is what we would expect. So we can go through here. Remember there were eight contrasts that we did. Four were differential contrasts, and four were just simple effects. But go through them, make sure it looks reasonable. And also keep in mind that even if there are maps that don't seem to have any activation, remember we had a Z threshold at a certain uh, height. So it really helps you and behooves you to look at the actual Z maps when looking at these results closer. At the very bottom, we see a series of time series plots which show you both the full model fit, which is the entire linear model with all the regressors thrown in there at each peak voxel for each contrast. So for example, ZSTAT1 refers to the first contrast we specified, which was left minus right. And it's a peak Z-score of 15, roughly, at this voxel coordinate. Now in red is the raw time series data. You can see it's pretty noisy, it has a lot of variance, but it seems to match up pretty well with what our model would have predicted. So for example, each time we had a person tap left, and we subtract that from the tap right regressor, you see a pretty good fit, and specifically with this green line, which is the, uh, the COPE partial model fit, that refers to just that contrast or just that regressor of interest. And they're usually more interpretable when you look at things like just the simple effects. Okay. Lastly, look at the registration to see how good of a job it did, both co-registering your functionals to your anatomical and then warping it to a standardized space. So first thing you see are these red lines here, and don't worry about the orientation, just make sure it looks reasonable. Okay? These red lines will try to roughly outline where the gray and white matter boundaries are and where the grooves of the sulci and gyri are, and also important structures like the ventricles. Now, it's worth pointing out here that it's really important to make sure that it did a good job of aligning the internal structures. All right, so ventricles, in this case, are a very good proxy for estimating how good of a job it did 
in an, uh, aligning the internal parts of the brain, which is usually what's of most interest. So first of all, this is example funk. So our functional images to our high-resolution skull-stripped anatomical. The registration of our anatomical to a standardized space. Again, this looks pretty good. Nothing looks too out of order. And then those warps, as we talked about before, are then applied to your functional images. So this is how good of a job did the warping do when carrying the functional images to a standardized space. Now most of these red lines seem to be pretty reasonable, so it appears like it did a good job. Okay, so that's it for examining the feed output. Again, it's pretty easy just to look through these HTML files. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going into the actual feed directories and looking in more detail what the output is in those directories.